Okay, so this is more of a an overview on purchasing the IR Illuminator floodlight for an existing uh, security camera system that has the capability of switching over to uh, infrared and seeing the infrared light typically at night and I would say most of the security cameras do. Uh, the particular brand that I uh, use is uh, Swan. I, I think that uh, very good uh, brand. I'm sure there are better brands. However, I'm perfectly happy with the Swan brand. So one thing uh, when you're getting uh, uh, an IR illuminator light, most of them do come with a receptacle and a bit of cord, uh, some more than others. As you can see, this is about 12 inches. Also, you have to read the specs, but most of them come with a photo cell that uh, turns it off during the day and turns it on at night. So you really don't need a switch for it. It just connects to your existing uh, security camera cable. The uh, cable, 5.5 uh, by 2.1 millimeter. Uh, that's what that's what this is, and that's that's the that's the typical connection for the security camera where it will uh, plug right in there and become powered. Now the problem is is you can't power both without a splitter. And with a splitter you can split the power of your existing security camera cable if your security cameras have power and video separately which again most of them do. Uh, one side of the splitter is going to go to the camera and the other side of the splitter is going to go to the light. So once that's connected to your hard drive or your uh, DVR, if you will, then it's going to have power. So once it gets dark, this light will turn on by itself. Now keep in mind, this is totally separate from the camera and the switch is totally separate from the camera. So you could potentially have a separate power uh, power source that powered the, the light and the switch, the day and night switch is right here, totally separate from the camera. The camera is going to switch over when it gets dark no matter what. So if that, if that was uh, the case and you, uh, for some reason, uh, your application, you can't, maybe you can't access your connections, you can always power it separately with a uh, some of them do come with uh, some of them have a special offer that you just have to order it but it it's for it's free or comes with the uh, the light and then others just come with it and then others don't come with it you can purchase it separately so now here come here is a dilemma that I have that I have found by experience that I can enlighten you with. Typically, if you're buying one of these, your your camera is already installed, and you've discovered that the the IR lights that come with the camera aren't enough to light up the area that you're trying to secure or monitor, whichever. So you have a couple different installations. Uh, some installations are are flush mount, and then others are are where you have the wiring going in a soffit or something so that all your all your wiring is hidden okay so no matter what these uh, connections you you're wanting protected so here's a typical here's your typical installation now and your uh, future installation is gonna look like this So now you have these are separate. You can put the camera wherever you want, but it's where you want these is the question. So typically you're going to want to have an extension on on your on your light because again, you've already got this in place. So what I discovered is that I purchased a short splitter and I purchased a long splitter, which is basically identical except the extension is is within within the splitter. 
So here's the problem that I faced is I plugged this in to get my power and I plugged one side in to my camera and one side into my light. My extension is only this long because again, I've already got this where I want it. I've got this tucked away nice where I want it. So my extension is only this long. So the right way to do that is to not get the extension and the splitter in one unit and get a splitter and then get an extension for whatever you want. I have one uh, situation that's two feet away, I have another situation that's 10 inches, 12 inches away, and I think I have another extension that's about a, a foot away, or a situation, a situation. So there it is. Uh, this particular is JC210, which ended up being a spotlight. That was uh, kind of another thing I wanted to mention is read the specs, but even the specs, I bought the JC210 and the Vicky Lynn IR, exact same specs. The only difference is this was JC210 foot, which is the only difference I could say. So I'm going to say that it, maybe it shines 210 feet, but it, it ended up being a spotlight. So that was, uh, that was something I had to figure out by experience. So just to show you what they look like, here's the JC210. Uh, and you can clearly see it's a spotlight. Then the Vicky Lynn IR is definitely a little bit more spread out. But like I said, the specs uh, really didn't say anything. So you ha really have to look at the reviews. Here's the uh, bracket. So you can screw the bracket wherever you want it, and then the light is going to hook up like so, which can be a little cumbersome when you're on the ladder, and it's, it's somewhat uh, delicate with these little washers and screws, but it's not that big a deal. Well, hopefully that, that helped out. There are many, many, many different kinds of IR illuminators, and for anywhere between 20 and 50 bucks, you can get a decent one. Here's one of my situations. This is the Vicky Lynn, and in this situation, I was able to get away with just the splitter, the plugs I have behind the soffit there. This is another situation. The Vicky Lynn pigtail's a little bit longer than the JC210. Uh, but I was still able to get away with just a splitter in this situation. This light uh, was in the right place because it was right near the plugs to the camera and again was able to get away with just a splitter.